All right, today we're hitting squats. And I'm not talking about going over all the intricacies of how to have proper form, because to me, it sounds like a snooze fest. What we're gonna do is take an already hard, impossible exercise to the squat and make it that much harder, and in turn, get more growth out of it. And I already hear people say, you know, I don't have a squat bar, I'm not stuck in quarantine. I get it, this is not disregarding any of that. You can take some of these principles, use them at home, do air squats, Hell, pick up one of your kids. I don't even care if they're 16 year olds, even better. Grab this little bastard ass, throw them over your shoulders and get after it. All right, so first things first, we gotta take those shoes off because if you wanna see how fucked up your form is, put those feet flat on the floor and really see where you're putting pressure. If it's on the outside of your foot, if it's on the inside, if you're collapsing those arches or if you're shifting that weight forward, putting it in your toes, you'll know right away if from the start, you're screwing yourself. And even more importantly than that, the more you train with your feet flat on the floor, it's just gonna increase angle flexibility over time. So if you're somebody who trains with a heel, great, you're gonna have some great numbers, cool. Problem is, we don't give a shit about that. We're trying to grow. So if numbers are your game, that's a whole different ball game. We're not even talking about that. If you want growth, you need more ankle flexibility. You need to be able to push those knees over your toes and not lift those heels up and be able to drive from your heels, especially in a high bar squat. You wanna be able to go all the way down, not lose that form, not let that butt tuck underneath and be able to go a nice deep stretch and stretch that quad as much as possible and then drive up from there and not lose that form and not have to shift your weight Keep it all in the quads the entire time. All right, so a lot of things we're starting off with are in relation to high bar squats, but they can be used on low bar squats, body weight, doesn't matter. One quick note though, is I'm gonna be facing away from the mirror most of the time, and that's just for the camera angle. If you have a mirror, by all means use it. Don't be that person at the gym that has a perfectly good mirror, they face the other way because they think their form is so good, it never is. Never overestimate how good you are at anything, especially when it comes to form, because if you're going by feel, your body will always betray you. A lot of times when I film these videos, I think I have some great clip or a great angle, and I'm doing this B-roll shot, and I'm doing a set of something, and then I look at it afterwards, and I'm like, holy shit, that form is awful. So step number one to getting more growth out of your squats is never locking it out. If I had to categorize my form, I call them three quarter reps. So I go all the way down, three quarters of the way up, back down. Now I see a lot of people at the gym move a lot of weight, but they go all the way down, come all the way up, lock their knees out, lock their back out, and then go back into it. To me, that defeats the purpose. You lose the tension on the quads, glutes, hams. You're not staying loaded the entire time. And if you want to categorize it as constant tension, I guess that's what it is. But to me, it's just about doing what's hard, not doing what's easy and locking it out and resting a second. Keep that tension, get more growth. Step number two is stop bouncing at the bottom. Cool, you can take 315 and whatever you deem heavy, smash the bottom, almost blow out your knees, and explode it back up. To me, you don't get your man card there. It comes in the mail when you can go all the way down and hold it for at least three seconds and really control and fire all the muscles you need to stabilize that weight and then drive it up. I've had a lot of people comment on videos, how do I increase my flexibility? Now, there's a lot of indirect ways you can do it, but the absolute best advice that anybody can give you is do the thing you're inflexible at more. So if it's squatting, Put a little weight on the bar, squat all the way down, keep that good perfect form and hold it. Your body will adapt. And when it comes to holds, you got some options. You can go heavier and do a shorter stint like a three second hold, or you could do something disgusting and put some lighter weight on there and do a 10 second hold. Step number three is actually one of my favorites, but I've never seen anybody do this. Of all the gyms I've ever been to, I've never walked in and saw somebody and been like, oh my God, they're as crazy as me. And I get it, because this is fucking emasculating. If you could do 315 before, you're going all the way down to 135 or even 95. Because what you're doing is slowing down the eccentric and concentric part of the movement down to a snail's pace. I'm talking 10 second negative, 10 second positive. Because truly, if you believe that time under tension is the key, then why not have actually more time under tension? All right, last but not least, step number four, contracting through the movement. Now there's a huge difference between just moving weight and contracting through it. Now, obviously all the muscles have to work in conjunction to get a squat done, but different parts of the movement are dominated by different muscles. So the very bottom is dominated by your glutes. Now, starting that contraction by flexing those glutes and starting that movement up 
will drive that weight up and now you're into the next section which is dominated by your hamstrings. Now from there, really contract those hamstrings. That'll start moving you a little bit up but also forward and then it's gonna drive into your quads which is gonna finish off the actual squat itself. Now when you can master that and know how to flex each muscle to get through the movement, your results and your growth are gonna go through the roof. Now I call these steps, I shouldn't just call them tips because that's really what they are. You can do all of them at once or you can just pull a couple out at a time. You can go and do a nice slow negative with a slight pause. You can do one day where you're just doing all contraction work, nice slow controlled contractions of the movement. Really that's what it is. You got more tools for your tool belt. So when you're doing squats, you wanna make it harder, you wanna get more growth pull one of these bad boys out. Like I said in the beginning, all these squat variations can be used across the board, any type of squat you do. One thing I wanted to do, but I knew this would be a 30 minute video, is go over my favorite ways of doing high bar squat, low bar squat, Smith, different hack squat techniques, and also dumbbell variations. So if you want me to do that, just leave a comment below, I'd be happy to do that. And as always, like, subscribe to the notification bell. Again, I'm gonna leave that link, so if you wanna put your email in there, when the course comes out, you'll be the first to know. It's just not ready yet, because who the fuck has access to a gym? And again, Get after it, get growing. I'll talk to you soon. And even more importantly, certain muscles are gonna dominate certain parts of the movement. So at the very bottom, the berry, the fucking berry.